Saquon, it's Maggie and Perloff. Thanks so much for the time today. And you guys for having me. Really appreciate it. Played your highlight there against the Eagles. Yeah. We want to get to plenty of giant stuff too, but Wait, Perloff's a big Eagles fan. I'm a lifelong Eagles fan, and you know what? They're headed to the playoffs. Can't you give them a break in week 18? <laughs> you guys looked like the team that was more fired up, believe it or not. Nah, we had to we had to go out on top. Um, we didn't have this, the year we were like, um, but we were able to control uh, the last game and go out how we wanted to. And in the NFL, this business, that's the last time that we always going to be with each other. So we wanted to go out on the top, and we came out uh, on fire and was able to get the job done. Yeah, 6-11 season for you guys. I'm sure not the one that you wanted to. But let's stick with you guys played and faced the Philadelphia Eagles twice in the last three weeks of the season. You played them twice since Christmas. They're now moving on to the playoffs. Can we do a little scouting report, please? Because their defense looks like it's a shell of what it has been, especially last year. You just torched them for two touchdowns. What do you see from the Eagles defense? How different is it now? I just feel like you get in slumps sometimes. Mm. Uh, that's the NFL. Uh, I, I don't think Philly is not a good team. They're still a really good team. Uh, they were in the Super Bowl last year, and they still have a lot of those talent. Um, but that's how it is. It's ups and downs through the season, and you never know. It's all about who really gets hot in the playoffs. That's really what really matters. And whoever goes into it winning, with, if you have a five-game win streak or you have a six-game losing streak, the beauty of the NFL is – one game, who's going to be who's gonna be the better man, the better team in that moment. And if Philly could find a way to do that, um, they can still make a run. Saquon, I want to ask you to scout another team. The Dallas Cowboys uh, really had your number this year. Is this a different Dallas Cowboys team than the team we've seen the last few years? Uh, was there something about this version of the team that might be able to go a little further than they have in the past? Yeah, I think if, uh, you know, I, I think it's this year's their best shot if they're going to do it. Um, you know, the, playing them for the last six years, uh, they they definitely this definitely was the toughest Dallas Cowboys team that I had to face. But like I said, kind of similar with um, Philly, like they're a hot team right now. Dallas a hot team right now. But when you get into playoffs, only thing that matters is who wins that game. Last year, Minnesota Vikings were fourteen and three or something like that, and we were nine and seven. And when we got there, it was in that moment who was a better team. We went went in there and got the win, and then. When we played Philly in the divisional playoffs last year, they were the better team that day too. So whoever's a better team and gets hot in the playoffs is the team that's going to make the runs. Saquon Barkley is joining us. Of course, the two-time Pro Bowler is joining us on behalf of Silk, and we'll get to that in a moment. Got a cool breakfast challenge. Can we dig down just a little bit deeper on the Cowboys? Why do you think they – and how do they feel different from years past because you know them so well? I think the defense is playing at a, at a, at a crazy level. Um, from the times that I played them. Like, you could really feel their presence uh, this year in the games that uh, I I've been a part of. And on the offensive side, I think Dak, obviously, is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But my biggest shout-out I got to give to is CD. I think CD has finally, you know, I've always known CD was going to be a talented wide receiver and a great wide receiver, but I think he took that step where he's elite. He's elite. He's one of the best wide receivers in the league. Um, and it's going to be a tough challenge for anybody to stop them. Also with uh, Ferguson, their tight end, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun playoff run for, you know, you, I don't want Dallas or, or Philly to win <laughs> at all because, you know, the, the rivals, but um, I think I would love to see them match up again, and especially when Philly start playing hot again. It's, I think it's going to be a good game for the fans too, just for if you're a fan of football. You know, Perloff, you always ask this question. We should ask it to Saquon because we always wonder, and I know you're on the offensive side of the ball here, not defense, but it's like you see C.D. Lamb. He's the obvious number one option for the Dallas Cowboys, and yet no one can stop him still. Like, why don't defenses try to do – throw every resource towards towards it, Saquon? Like, why is that not the game plan? Hey, under all circumstances – under no circumstances, rather, can C.D. Lamb get the football? Um, yeah, defenses probably do, you know, they, that's probably the game plan, the mindset to come. It's on coaching too. It's on coaching. It's just putting your position, putting your players still in position to be able to make plays. And they have so many other talent, talented players around them too. So you really can't only focus on one player when you're, when you're playing against the Dallas Cowboys or anybody really in the NFL. That's, that's a, the, the challenge. But I think the, the, the coaches do a really good job of, even though everyone knows CD is the guy of put him in positions to make plays. And I think CD is really great. He's not just a guy who could just run routes and get open. Like you can throw him a little slant. You could throw him a little screen and he's still going to be productive and make plays. So that definitely helps out with his case and the reason why he's also been productive too. 
You know, Saquon, there's been a lot of talk over the last few years, the value of a running back, but this is a time of year for running backs. And it feels like, especially this year, we're not seeing a lot of 49, 42 games. It feels like a lot of, like you look at the Chiefs this year and you look at the way the Bills have played lately. It feels like this might be the time uh, in the playoffs where running back makes a huge difference. I think Christian McCaffrey is the one to do it, to be honest. Um, I feel like San Fran, you know, have a really good shot of, of, of winning the whole thing and taking it, you know, taking it to the Super Bowl. And I feel like Christian McCaffrey is going to be a big part of that. He's been all year. Uh, that's a talented team over there. But people might want to say the running back position is dying or this and that. There, it's like when you get to these games and when you're going against opponents that's going to be close games, you got to be able to play great defense and you got to be able to run the ball at some point throughout the game. Um, if you if you're able to do that, it's gonna put yourself in the best position to win football games. And uh, I think Christian McCaffrey and there's a whole bunch of guys in the playoffs right now that are, are capable of doing that. But right now, Christian had the best year out of all the running backs, um, in my opinion, you know, often the player of the year and an MVP uh, caliber player. So uh, hopefully, he can continue to do that. Saquon Barkley is joining us. I've been pounding the table for Christian McCaffrey to be the MVP candidate from the 49ers, not Brock Purdy. So much so, Saquon, that like a fan from San Francisco sent Pearl off and I Brock Purdy for MVP t-shirts that we could wear to try to persuade us. I mean, I imagine what you'll say here, but when people say Brock Purdy is the MVP of the 49ers, what do you say to that? Um, the MVP is a is a quarterback award. So I, I can see why why they say that, but I think what Christian did this year is, you know, it's, you know, he's the best running back in the NFL. Uh, and trust me, I hate saying that. I hate <laughs> having that come on. I hate having that come on my mouth, but it's the truth. It's the reality of it. Is he, he's he's been balling. He's been playing great. Um, and even if he doesn't win MVP, I think he should be Offensive Player of the Year for sure. Saquon Barkley is joining us. Of course, he's the two-time Pro Bowler. He was the former Offensive Rookie of the Year. He's an All-American at Penn State. Want to get your thoughts on the college? Football National Championship in just a moment. He's joining us on behalf of Silk. Silk is kicking off their Feel Plenty Good Challenge. It's a breakfast challenge. We're very curious about what you're eating and what goes in your smoothie, Saquon. So we will ask you about that. Don't worry. But, you know, I know that you were on a, a phone call reported. You were on a phone call last year. It was McCaffrey. It was uh, Nick Chubb. It was Derrick Henry about how to kind of basically – you know, fix the financial state of the position for the running back. Has anything come since that? Are there still any good ideas you've heard about how to get running backs better uh, paid better? Um, no, there really hasn't been too much conversations really after that when we really kind of got right into the season. And at that point, you know, all that conversation kind of got to get put to bed for a little bit. You got to focus on the season. I think John Taylor did a really good job of, you know, getting a deal done um, that really did help other running back market again. Um, but yeah, I think I feel like every position should do this. To be honest, uh, I think it was a good thing that we just got a lot of a lot of the the well known uh, running backs who 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 are got paid or are going to get paid soon, um, all in a call, and we all just got to chop it up and and you know feed off each other and and get to get insight from each other. And I think that's important. And you know, I want to be involved more in that if, if we continue to do that. Did you ever think about, uh, I know some young players, there was a, a, a thinking out there that players might not play running back. Was it running back always for you? Did you ever think about playing another position in your life? No, I never thought about it. I've, I've always loved running back. Uh, running back has been something that I've been doing since I was seven, eight years old. Never quarterback? Um, nah, never quarterback. I, I never wanted to be a quarterback at all. I think my son, my son, uh, he he he's, you know, his first word was football, and he he loved throwing the football to me and, and any type of ball. So he he might he might uh, I might put him down that road to to play quarterback. But with the trend of like kids not want to play running back, like I don't believe in that. It's just a trend right now. Like we're we're just in a phase where everyone's like, oh, the running back position is the, it's like it's just a little phase. The running back position is going to come back alive, especially if we continue to have guys like Christian. Um, and Derrick Henry playing at such a high level. Saquon Barkley is joining us on behalf of Silk. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, so there's been some changes with the New York Giants. Uh, Wink Martindale, defensive coordinator, has resigned. There's been some other changes on the defensive side. And Saquon, yeah, I know you're on the offensive side, but can you tell when there's tension between coaches? There was tension reportedly between head coach Brian Dayball and Wink Martindale, and now Martindale is gone. Like, can the rest of the team feel that coaches aren't getting along necessarily. 
Uh, like you said, I, I, I'm not on the defensive side. Um, obviously, uh, one was one of the leaders and one of the captains on the team. If there was any tension or anything, uh, they did a really good job of never letting it be a problem for the team. <clears throat> you were never, you never felt that. Uh, you never got that. Um, obviously, what happens between closed doors uh, is something that you know. That's what what they have to control. Uh, do I believe that there was tension? I don't know. Like I said, uh, they did a really good job of keeping it between um, them and the coaches. What you're supposed to do, and that's that's what matters. Sometimes you get in arguments as coaches. Sometimes you get in arguments as players. Uh, when you have everybody, you know, all working such a common goal, there's a lot of issues that present itself. But the, pro- the the way you have to have to handle it as players and coaches to make sure that it never is a reason why we're losing games. It's never a reason why we're not being productive in games. So that's the way you got to control it. And I think the coaches did a really good job if there ever was any tension. All right, Saquon, listen, uh, my physique similar to yours. I'm really interested to hear what you're saying yes. about, <laughs> about, about smoothies. Uh, that's a lie. That's a, that's a bold-faced lie. So Silk is kicking <laughs> off its pl- uh, Planty Good Challenge with star-powered smoothies. Uh, seven days of delicious plant-based breakfast and a chance to win free breakfast for life. Uh, I'm into it. Tell me why I should be drinking smoothies every day. I mean, one, free breakfast for life. Like, who, oh. who doesn't want that at all? And there's also, I believe, five to six others that would get get it for a year. Um, I think everyone should get involved because it inspires everyone to be able to get into a healthier lifestyle. And I'm all about that. Like you said, our physiques are really similar. Very similar. So we got to continue to, we got to continue to stay fit, continue to stay healthy, put the right things in your body. Um, getting in my career, going to year seven. Every time I say that out loud, it sounds crazy, crazy every single time, but just finding new ways that I could continue to improve my game and get an upper hand on uh, my competition. And that's focus on nutrition and diet and add, add more plant-based to my diet um, and also to my breakfast. And I feel like a lot of people over, overthink breakfast. And it's mm. a fun, easy way to get breakfast in, the right stuff in your body, um, and to start your, your day off great. Can I share my smoothie recipe real quick? Uh, well, I gonna... want Saquon's, not yours. Well, you, just, yesterday, I... you compared yourself to Chet Holmgren. That's uh. who you look like, not Saquon Barkley. <laughs> Two bananas, <laughs> almonds, walnuts. I put avocado in it, and I use silk soy milk, actually. Wait, why are we hearing about it, yours? Saquon, listen. what's your uh, smoothie? Because he knows that sounds good. <laughs> First of all, I love it. I, I love that. Actually, the silk is the, the best part. Um, <laughs> for me, it's I, I, it's fruit. It's I think we did bananas. We did st- uh, strawberries, blueberries, spinach, um, chia seeds. Um mm. The most important ingredient is silk. It's a silk milk. Um, it's it's really important to to put that in, um, and it also gives it over the edge, gives it the taste that I need. Challenge.silk.com is where you can go. You got a pledge to incorporate silk into your breakfast for seven days in a row in this January. Then you enter to win this challenge, and you could get free breakfast for life. The six other randomly selected winners will receive breakfast for a year. Uh, last one for you, Saquon, and, and thank you so much for joining us. So you've had some good battles with the University of Michigan when you were an All-American at Penn State. Perloff and I do not agree on mm. this about whether Michigan's title is tainted because of the sign stealing scandal uh, from this year. What you played college football big time. You played against Harbaugh in Michigan. What's your thoughts on them winning the title? That's a great point to me. Honest, I never, I didn't think about it that way until this question was just presented to me. Um, one, I, I love that Michigan won the Big Ten. Uh, obviously. Uh, being in the Big Ten, you can see someone from the Big Ten come out on top and get the job done. Uh, it's really important, and it's, I think it's helpful for all the Big Ten schools. Um, it, does it count? Yeah, it still counts. Uh, it still counts. Uh, I don't really. I'm not too familiar with it. I, I, I obviously during the season, I saw news articles and stuff pop up about it, but um, I'm pretty sure they weren't stealing signs uh, against Washington or against Alabama in the College Football Playoffs. And they got the punishment. Uh, Harbor wasn't there for most of the games. Trust me, I, I watched uh, the office coordinator beat, beat up on my, my knee lines. <laughs> um, and then, you know, at the end of the day, you got to win football games. And they did that. And you know, hats off to them. Um, and hopefully we can get them next year at Penn State. Wait, take what You'll root for Michigan, but you don't want the Eagles or the Cowboys to win in the playoffs. <laughs> so that's where you draw the line. Yeah, I'm, re- I'm removed, though. I'm removed. Oh, from so it's like if I was okay. in college, if I was in college, it's like, 
it's like, no, I don't want another Big Ten school to win. But now it's like we always get in this conversation, this argument. It's like, oh, SEC or the Big Ten. So it's like, or Pac-12 or I don't know if the – well, now there's a whole bunch of schools from pac 12 come to the Big Ten. I'm all lost in the college world right now. <laughs> uh, now when I'm in a locker room, I could – it's you can't be like, oh, SEC got this and Georgia. It's like, okay, well, like Big Ten, we have a national championship too, and this is what we got to go against. Penn State got to go against – uh, national championships, Ohio State. Um, so Big Ten is the same level caliber of SEC. And right now we're the best conference. So it helps. <laughs> helps for the trash talk in the locker room. Saquon Barkley on behalf of Silk. Appreciate you, Saquon. Best of luck in whatever happens this offseason with you and your future. Um, and thank you again. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate that. Saquon Barkley from your New York Giants.